I'm your host, Kaylee, and this is Rebel Wellness. You've just tuned in to Rebel Wellness, the podcast that's here to revolutionize your approach to personal health and well-being. I'm your host, Kaylee, also known as Coach Kales, and I'm thrilled to have you join our Rebel community. In a world that's saturated with fleeting diet trends and unrealistic beauty standards, we believe it's time for serious change. Our mission is simple yet profound, to empower women like you to break free from the confines of today's diet culture and embrace a holistic approach to health that's sustainable for the long haul. If you're like me, you're here to embrace the concept that true well-being encompasses every facet of your life, mind, body, and soul. Rebels believe in aligning our journey with our individual needs and values because a one-size-fits-all approach just simply doesn't cut it anymore. This podcast is your safe space to explore the depths of wellness guided by myself, experts, real life stories, and genuine commitment to your growth. You're here to begin your transformative journey, and it's time to discover your own version of balance in your health. Every week when you tune into Rebel Wellness, we'll learn, grow, and rebel against the polarizing outdated norms to finally achieve lasting vitality and joy. Because that sounds pretty great, right? Your journey starts now, and I am so excited that you're here. Welcome back, lovely. You are here. Rebel Wellness 2024 is the first day of the new year. I am so excited that you have joined us today. Today's topic is going to be a really good one. So I hope that you kind of set aside some you time for this episode because it is a really, really good one. Something that I've been doing for several years on my own that has helped me I wouldn't necessarily say just manifest kind of things into my life better, but I've also found that it's really helped me get clear and shed some things and attract some things, you know, not in a sense where it's magical or anything weird like that. It's actually just like energetically really solid and powerful. That's a good word for it powerful. So I want to welcome you to the show today. We are officially at a full year of Sunday episodes of Rebel Wellness. Yay! (laughs) So excited. I can't believe we actually did it, you know, and it's been so great. We're rounding at almost 20,000 streams for the full year. The last few months have honestly been like big spikes of growth of listeners. So if you are one of my new listeners, hello, welcome to the show. I am so excited you're here. I'm honestly, guys, like what a badass first year. I really had no idea what to expect from starting this podcast. And I've learned and grown on my own as well as with you guys. I know so many of you have shared really great feedback that has kind of changed a lot of your approach to your health or your how you um, support your family and your friends or your partner, you know, and that's amazing. That's everything that I ever wanted this podcast to be. So thank you so much for all of the great feedback. Thank you for listening and all the great episode ideas and, um, sharing kind of how it's impacted you because I always welcome that. I mean, most of the reason or almost all of the reason why I do what I do is because I hope to positively impact you and your health journey. So thank you so much for that. Um, I just had to take another moment to say that. I know I said it in previous episodes of this best of series for, for rounding out 2023, but As we head into 2024, we've got some really exciting things on the way, a lot more interviews, a lot more great informational and also actionable topics. And I'm really curious to see what 2024 is going to bring us for our Hot Take Summer episodes. I know Hot Take Summer was a really big hit and I enjoyed doing it so much. So if you want to at any time ask questions. Like today we have our very first Q&A that's going to be integrated into today's chat that is from a listener. Feel free to send it to hello at kayleelauren.com or of course DM me on Instagram at rebel wellness podcast or at kayleelauren as well. Both of those are how you can communicate to me and ask any wellness questions that you want me to just kind of off the cuff answer in a little segment in the episode. (laughs) And 
if you think that you have a episode guest that you would love me to have on the podcast, send me their profiles too. I would love to kind of see. I mean, obviously I am not at the scale enough to get like big names like Huberman or something like that on the podcast. But if you have somebody that's on a similar scale as me under the hundreds of thousands of followers (laughs) zone, uh, but there's a lot of people that are possibly more well-educated and very well-experienced and very interesting to talk to that don't have a huge following. A lot of the times I found that a lot of people who have big followings actually hardly have any accreditations and things. And I know a lot of you have mentioned that as well. And so that's like a little bit kind of like the weird side of social media. But anyways, off that tangent there, I just wanted to let you guys know I am all about collaboration and community. So whatever you think is worth sharing with me or suggesting, I'm open. I'm all ears. I may not always do it, but I am definitely going to log it in my suggestions box in my mind and make sure that I get around to it at some point in the year. So, but with that said, like I mentioned earlier, come join us on Instagram. The community is growing there. I'd love for you to come to coachkales.com, join our newsletter. We have a really good one that you guys, if you're in the newsletter group, already got because it's the first of 2024. I'm recording this a little bit ahead of that, of course. So you should have gotten it. (laughs) If you did not, let me know. There's a lot of great stuff in there and there's actually something in there that is applicable to today's episode. So today's episode, we're going to spend a much needed chat and I'm going to invite you to do a little reflection exercise, like I was saying earlier that I've enjoyed doing the last few years. So I'm going to call it like the ins and outs strategy. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who have a very similar thing or the same exact thing, but I'm just calling it that because it's easy to remember and it's short. And that's kind of how I refer to it in my mind. But honestly, it's just a really valuable exercise for shedding and receiving, which I think energetically a lot of us have to get more familiar with because Life is all about like moving forward if you want to. (laughs) There's, I know there's people who are afraid to move forward or maybe want to stay comfortable in what's known, but do know that you never get new results if you never try, right? If you're not actually trying to reflect and see how you can do better or what you can change or what's harming you, you know, then you never get to access the beauty of growth and discomfort and everything to come with moving forward in your life, you know? And um, I always remember that little movie, the phrase, and it was keep moving forward. And I remember that quote stuck with me when I was little because I kind of liked the concept of no matter what setbacks happen or mistakes you make or whatever, you keep moving forward from it, right? You, you shed it and forget it <laughs> in a way. You don't always forget it, but that's kind of just a another phrase that's easy to remember. But that's the concept that I like to bring into the ins and outs strategy, so to speak, because you get to think about what you want to welcome into your life and what you want to kind of leave out or shed or just literally push out, you know, whatever it is, whatever way you want to look at it or whatever weight it carries, you want to let it go, right? You want to keep moving forward. So I wanted to open 2024 for you with this strategy and this exercise, or you don't even have to do the exercise. You can just think about it while we talk about it and maybe do it later. But I think that it's a really key place to set your mind as you're heading into a new year. I know so many people like honestly have weird premonitions, not premonitions, that is the wrong word. I know a lot of people have like a lot of predispositions of how they feel or view about like new year, new you. Some people get excited about that thought or concept. Some people are like, that's such BS, never happens, it's dumb. I'm not even worrying about it. I'm just going to steamroll into the new year, same person. You know, <laughs> generally, we all are coming into the new year as the same person. However, it's how you kind of set intentions or reflect that and setting those intentions in a way that sets you up for positive change. Because if you're not thinking about the things that you want to do better or do more of, or even do less of, you're not really going to be able to access any of that forward movement that you might really be yearning for. And I know a lot of people are totally fine doing their own thing. And if that's you, that's great. 
this is a good conversation though to have where you can kind of reflect and think about like, maybe there are some things that you want to change. Maybe there are some things that are not serving you anymore, you know, and maybe there's some things that are serving you and you really want to kind of like jive with that more and focus on it harder, you know? So I just wanted to kind of set the table with that as we start this chat, because this is a really good conversation and a really good exercise should you turn it into one for yourself. And again, if you're in the newsletter and you've got the email with a little graphic, you can utilize that graphic to kind of organize (laughs) what we're going to do today. So let's get started. Okay, so I just want to reiterate again, I really like this approach of the ins and outs strategy compared to generic goal setting for like new year's mindset, because it shifts your focus from just checking a box or fixating on a rigid new routine or goal. And it takes your power back because it helps you pick things that you want to shed or bring into your life on your terms. So a lot of the times we pick a rigid diet. Let's say you pick keto diet (laughs) and now you're like, I can't eat carbs. I can't eat alcohol or (laughs) drink alcohol and I can't la la la, whatever it is. And then you're like following these rules that were not necessarily made by you, but you're just choosing to follow because it helps you have something to follow and you think it's going to help you achieve your health goal. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, you know? A better way to approach this can sometimes be I am choosing to reduce my carbohydrate consumption and increase my good quality fats, moderately increase my proteins, and it's going to be essentially following a ketogenic diet. And I'm going to see where this goes with my health, looking for my health benefits. Weight loss can be involved, but you don't have to focus on it that way. So Kind of shifting the way you think about things, especially in the way of keeping it a choice you're making versus a diet and rigid list you're following or box you're putting yourself into. It can help you feel less restricted and more in your, like I said, in your power and that can help you adhere better to your goal changes. So I just use a nutritional example because I know that, I mean, obviously this is a lot, a heavy handed nutrition podcast, but at the same time, it's in a way that is really relatable because a lot of people tend to adjust their nutrition choices in the new year because they want to have some significant health changes. And yes, nutrition 100% is one of the major ways that you can influence your health like bar none. It's probably the biggest thing that I have seen and why I love it and focus so heavily on it is because I see how much it impacts us and everywhere from our mental health to our physical health and the trajectory of our health. All of that is directly influenced by your nutrition. So I do think that it is a great goal, you know, and I I have definitely seen the gamut. I see a lot of people be like, okay, New Year's, January 1st, doing this thing, doing the keto, whatever it is, and then they fall off. And I have seen that usually it's a lot of because people are like, all right, I'm going to follow this because I want to lose this much weight and I'm going to just cut everything and I'm going to change everything and follow this list of what I'm supposed to do. And then they like don't enjoy it. They pout about what they cannot have versus what they are choosing to not have. And then because it feels like they're kind of a slave to this whole external thing, they fall off, right? So hopefully you're kind of getting the point I'm trying to make is that when you're shifting and you're choosing to welcome something into your life and shift other things away, maybe temporary, maybe for the whole year, maybe for the rest of your foreseeable future, it's really important for you to make that as a choice and to remind yourself that it is a choice you're making for a certain reason. And I'm not going to get into it because I've gotten into it a lot in a lot of other episodes, but understanding your why, like what is important to you about your health and the trajectory of your health and your current situation is really important for you because then you can kind of have a deeper fallback when times come where you either fall off track or you give up, you know, all those different things. Sometimes that's kind of the same thing, (laughs) but fall off track is I'm assuming you're going to be coming back onto the track. Giving up is just being like, I'm out. I want you to remember that, that it is really important to think of your why. It's not just about looking sexy. It's about aging well, having stronger bones, having better hormone health, going through perimenopause and menopause better. You know, there's so many different reasons that we really want to take better care of our personal nutrition and our fitness and all of that stress management, yada, yada. 
think about that as we're going through this exercise. But so if you are somebody who wants to use this chat today as a little workshop, I would suggest this moment right now to pause, grab a notepad or open a note in your phone to take some notes or just thoughts that come into your mind in relation to yourself as you're listening. Because honestly, I don't know about you, but for me, if I don't write something down when I think about it, especially like as I'm getting older, I literally forget it or I forget how I said it or I thought it and then I'm pissed off because I'm like, dang it, I know that's not as good as when I first said it. So this is a good time for you to do that. Like, trust me. All right, so your first step is to take a moment and just reflect on this last year. Was 2023 good to you? Were you good to you? Did you have any intentions you set from our very first podcast, which was one of our most popular podcasts? Did you uphold those things or some variation thereof? Those are all really good things to think about right now. And again, should you need to pause the podcast and think, this is a good time to do that. But I want you to think about like what were some specific memories or just wins that you recall. They could be as small as you never let your laundry build up, you always put it away all the time, or you nearly or completely cut out gluten for the entire year. You know, there's a lot of different little things that could have been wins for you. And we want to welcome every single version. I think the worst thing that we tend to do, or a lot of us tend to do, is downplaying wins. I think a lot of us think that like, oh, like clients will say this all the time. Oh, it's not really that important. Or it's not, I know it's not that big as like a big weight loss or, you know, things like that. But I did this today or I stepped on the scale and I didn't have an emotional response. Or I chose this and I didn't drink tonight instead when I was out with my friends. And those things are actually like equally as big in my mind, especially as your coach, to your success with your health progress. Because it's all the little things that add up over time. It's a little by little, little becomes a lot. That's really important to not downplay any size of win just because you think it's not as big as 20 pounds lost or something like that. And sometimes, like a lot of you may know, 20 pounds lost isn't always a win, especially if you don't have your head in a healthier mindset to keep it off, you know, if that is supportive of your health. Again, we do not always need to be losing weight. Um, And the main goal of success in your life has nothing to do with how many pounds you lose <laughs> over your life. So, but bringing it back into that. So what were some things that were supportive for you in 2023? What were you successful at? Did you take more time for yourself? Did you say no more? Did you support your friends better? Did you at least maintain relationships better in your life? There's so many things in a lot of different angles that you should be celebrating for yourself, right? So once you bring that into your focus, Maybe you should write some down because they're going to be very related to the next part of this. Um, And we really want to bring your vibration higher because it's really key in this exercise to start with because we kind of want to jam off of those good vibes (laughs) earlier on because it's going to really help you pick the best things to focus on for what you want to bring in. Hopefully you're vibing pretty positive right now. And let's think about what you want to bring into your life right now. Like from all of those, what do you want to keep in or what do you want to do better and bring in? So say you were good at saying no to things this year. What for 2024 do you want to bring in that's along those lines? Is there something specific that you want to make sure you do all the time now? Maybe you don't want to say yes to more than two social engagements a week. Maybe your life is just too batshit crazy (laughs) and you're like, this actually feels good for me. Maybe I'm just going to make this kind of a thing because it protects my energy and my mental health, honestly. So think about those things because now we want to write down at least like three things that you really want to bring into your life right now. So for me personally, some things that I want to continue and to bring in more, especially in 2024 here, I definitely want more space to rest or to exist. Something that's been really hard for me is I don't always practice what I preach in that sense. And it's really hard to break free from the expectation that like, oh, Kales is a hustler. Kales like is such a hard worker. She's very ambitious. She does all this stuff, you know, and it's like, yes, but there's also a lot of downsides to that. And like I've talked about many times before on my podcast, I deal with what is kind of 
blanket termed adrenal fatigue, but essentially I get a big drop in my cortisol right smack in the middle of the day when it should be tapering off slowly. That's what it looks like in labs. For those of you who are like, I heard adrenal fatigue isn't real. It's like, okay, well, this is what we call it when it looks like this because it shouldn't be this way. And that's the literal hormonal data to show that something is off there. So for me, what that looks like is I have been existing on high cortisol and doing too much all day long for too many years um, in a way too where I didn't mentally think I was doing that much. There are times where I for sure felt burnout. There was times where I literally would tell some of my friends like, my soul is tired right now. And it made me reflect that maybe what I'm doing doesn't have to be this hardcore. Maybe I can do all of this, but better. And the last several years I've been practicing that and I have discovered I can do better and my clients and work can still succeed and do very well without me being balls to the wall all the time. So if that's something that's re like relatable to you, I would really invite you to bring that into your 2024 as well. Taking space to just like sit on your patio with your tea or your coffee and stare <laughs> at the sky. I don't know. <laughs> There's so many things that um, are like birthrights and you should take time to exist. We don't have to be keeping up with the rat race all the time. And honestly, I don't know, like for some of my clients that are not on the coastal states in the US, like, do you feel a different pace? Because I know for a lot of my clients, like almost, I would say almost all of my clients are coastal. They're either East Coast or West Coast, mostly West Coast, but like the stereotype, the West Coast is very fast. I mean, I was born and raised in Silicon Valley, and I know East Coast is even faster, <laughs> like hello, New York and all that. And so I'm wondering, like for anybody else who is like more in the internal states, like, do you do you just exist sometimes and it's fine? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people who feel it everywhere, but I am always curious about that. You know, maybe in a future part of my life, I will move to a different state that is more chill and I'll be like, wow, this is great. <laughs> Maybe my cortisol will taper off better. It won't just tank on me. Um, but anyways, bringing it back in here, I want to um, let you know that that might be one of the best things you can do for 2024 for yourself. Because honestly, even though you might enjoy operating on more than all cylinders, I know I did. I know it was part of my identity still is kind of part of my identity and all that stuff. It doesn't mean that you're any less worthy or any less valuable. It doesn't mean that you are being lazy and it doesn't mean that you're going to just suddenly fall into an existential crisis <laughs> with all the space that you have for thinking about yourself. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of people have been raised to believe that work is everything. Work is your worth. And I would say that that's okay if that's what you want to spend the rest of your life doing. But do you think you're going to regret not taking space for yourself, not taking space for your health, not taking space for your family? You know, I mean, more often than not, most of those people that they interview on their deathbeds, like you can watch all the videos on YouTube, they almost always say they regret not spending more time with their family and making quality memories with their friends and family as well. Work is great but it shouldn't be everything. So for me, I'm trying to live that sooner than later. I don't want to wake up when I'm 50 and be like, I've had all this billions of dollars and I have no core memories with my family, you know? Like, no, that's not what's up for me because we could die at any point. And I'm not to be morbid, but it's just a reminder that, you know, it could be tomorrow and you could be like, wow, I really should have spent more time with my children. Should have spent more time with my partner, with my dog, with my cats, you know, who, who knows, whatever it is, um, listen to that kind of ache in your heart and try to find ways to adjust your life right now to support that. So for me, I need to take more space and allow myself to have some rest and allow myself to just exist and honestly reincorporate hobbies. <laughs> I love to bake. I love bouldering. I love paddleboarding. You know, there's so many things that I really love to do that I've not allowed myself any space to do. And it's like, but that's like what life is supposed to be. It's supposed to be some fun things and some hard things, 
or maybe more, you know, it's like we get to decide, right? So decide for yourself, figure out what you want to do. So I know I really want to have more time to flow creatively with hobbies, but also flow more creatively with work. Like there's so much stuff that I have. I have a bajillion ideas, guys. So many ideas of great courses and some DIY things for you guys that I really want to, or I am going to launch in 2024 for you and the years after that. And I'm really excited about them, but I also have to create space for them. So for a little insight into Kales's life here, that's something that I am bringing into my life is more space for that because there's lots of cool things that I would love to do and am planning to do. And I need to just have that space. So what in your life are you not making space for? Or maybe what did you start to make space for the last couple of years or maybe just this last year that you want to bring in to 2024? Write a few things down. And if you are a person who gets paralyzed <laughs> by open-ended questions or open-ended thought, I know there's a lot of people who actually need like journal prompts to journal. Open brain flow doesn't come easily to them. That's totally okay. Just different brain stuff, you know? That's the science term, brain stuff. But a more structured approach to this concept might be reflecting on what I would consider the four health pillars. So your fitness, your movement, nutrition, your mental health, and your finances. So um, a lot of people are like, oh, why did you bring finances into it? Because, girl, you know finances make a huge impact on all of those things. And they're really important just in general in life. Because, unfortunately, the cost of living has a cost. And it's finances. <laughs> so if one of those things is usually awry, a lot of the other things can become awry. So I have a lot of you know that I usually focus around fitness, nutrition, mental health, um, or mindset as the pillars of health. But... Finances are really important because I feel like you cannot avoid evaluating them or reflecting on them to make good long-term progress because most of those things cost money, like better quality of nutrition costs more money. Fitness can cost more money depending on if you have a coach or not or whatever, or whatever uh, gym membership you have and clothing you want to wear. And your mental health will be just overwhelmed if you don't have those in check. So that's why that's in there. But those are all good pillars for you to reflect on and ask yourself, what in my fitness category of life do I want to bring in more? What in my personal nutrition do I want to bring in more? Do I want to cut out caffeine in the mornings and just have it between 11 and 1? You know, those are cool things that are beneficial, especially for people who, like me, have more cortisol challenges. Where in your mental health can you be more supportive of yourself? Or what do you want to bring in that supports your mental health better? So that's kind of like where taking space to rest is important for me. And then in your finances, like what could you do better? What do you want? Do you want to set a goal? Do you want to make sure that you have an emergency fund? Do you want to pay down a larger percentage of your student loans or your debt in general? Do you want to finally pay off your car? You know, whatever it is. Um, it's really important to set some intentions and such for your finances as well, because those will definitely bleed into the rest of those categories. So in each of those categories, to kind of finish out the bringing in part of this chat today, like write just like one to three habits or focuses that you want to bring into your life. So that's the ins part of the strategy. taking a quick break for answering the first question of the start of our Q&A segment. This question, the asker requested to be anonymous, <laughs> but it's a very great question. It's honestly a question I've gotten asked a ton over the years and even a question that I used to have for myself before I knew the answer. So the question that I'm answering today is, can you get rid of cellulite? And this is such a big question, guys, um, especially for dominantly females. A lot of males actually don't get cellulite because cellulite is very estrogen related and also very female genetic related. So if you've ever wondered why you don't really see cellulite on males, it's because there's a lot of hormone action going on in there. So first things first, cellulite essentially occurs when you have fat cells in your thighs and you know, it's standard body fat patterning. It's usually the backs of the arms, thighs, glutes, you know, sometimes belly. 
even in the backs of your calves, you know, it's kind of where dominating fat pockets can be. I know that's not a sexy way to say it, but unfortunately that is what it is. And these cells, these fat cells, as they enlarge and they get bigger, they poke through your fascia. So we have a layer of, we have our dermal layer, which is our skin. We have a layer of fascia. It's kind of like, you can think of it as like a webbing that's like between your skin and your muscles. And then you have your muscles and then you have your veins and your arteries and all that stuff and your bones. So between your skin and your muscles is a layer of fascia. It can bunch up and kind of shift around. There's a lot of different planes of fascia in the body. There's more and more as we start to learn about it more specifically. And this is kind of the primary thing that um, foam rolling and massage works on. That's why a lot of the times you feel so good after getting kind of rolled out essentially. And a lot of people initially, especially with foam rolling, I can't tell you how many of my clients started foam rolling and like, this thing sucks. This is horrible. It hurts so bad. That means you have really unhealthy fascia. And it's really common to have that because especially if you've never given your body much TLC, a lot of people never go get massages. Um, a lot of people have never foam rolled ever. You know what I mean? Um, and especially because it can be extremely uncomfortable the first few weeks, stick through it. Like I can't tell you enough how many clients have completely changed their mind and actually like crave foam rolling, especially when they're feeling kind of misaligned or tight or whatever, you know, foam rolling is one of the best ways to attack quote unquote your fascia and kind of smooth it back out, pull it back to where it's supposed to be. And it helps with um, bringing a lot more nutrients to your body because your fascia can be um, a transporter area for a lot of um, nutrients through hydration and um, it can help muscles recover better because of that. There's so many reasons that it's really important to give fascia love. Bringing that all back around, cellulite is fat cells pushing itself through that fascia layer. So it's kind of like the netting and the little fat cells are kind of like poking their heads out essentially. And that's where we get all these dimples and such. So you might think initially, like, can it, can it go away then if I just work on my fascia? Yes and no. So you may have heard of things like the fascia blaster or whatever. I'm not affiliated. I do know that it works to some extent for a lot of people because it is you bringing some good TLC love and <laughs> attention to um, those fascial layers, helping it smooth back out, helping bring blood flow to that area and help a lot of those dimples kind of smooth out. That is one of the only real ways aside from hormone rebalancing, better nutrition, you know, all that kind of stuff that will impact your cellulite. Unfortunately, all creams, things like that are all baloney. The only thing that like would be a quick fix that actually could work is probably like liposuction. I'm not going to promote or support that specifically. It's a very invasive procedure and it's very aggressive on the body. But if you were to ask, <laughs> that is a real, uh, a real answer. You know what I mean? Um, which is why, you know, a lot of people do opt for that, unfortunately, but you can do it by cleaning up your diet, focusing more on complete proteins, good quality fats, healthy fiber, vegetables, fruits, you know, reducing your processed carbs and reduction of alcohol consumption, because not only does alcohol wreak havoc on your liver and other systems in your body, it also impacts your hydration levels, which can influence a more aggressive dimply look for your cellulite. And it also creates oestrogens, which are estrogen mimickers in the body. Your body also makes them, but it's a way that your body can produce more of those which can further push your body into what would be called estrogen dominance, which is a state where your more feminine sex hormones, progesterone and estrogen are imbalanced, where your estrogen is much higher than your progesterone. And then it starts to become kind of a um, hormonal storm for depositing a lot more and more and more fat and having more imbalances in a lot of different things. So not going into that too deeply, but that's really important to understand because it is directly correlated to who might have more cellulite than others, how it might continue to get more significant or noticeable. But at the same time, you can really help yourself by working on cleaning up some of your nutrition, get yourself a little bit more hydrated or a lot of bit more hydrated, honestly, <laughs> and making sure that you take time, maybe daily, maybe at least weekly, to do things like foam rolling, or you could buy one of those fascia blasters, massage yourself out, try to get that fascia a little bit healthier, and it will, over time, with consistency, get noticeably better. 
I can tell you from experience. So I hope that that's helpful for you and answers your question. But you sometimes, like especially for those who have really strong genetics on depositing cellulite, you may not be able to get rid of it altogether, but you can improve the look of it and improve it in general following some of these tips. So I hope that's helpful. But again, there are no pills, there are no creams that can actually get rid of cellulite. So that is going to wrap up this question for Q&A, but great question. I am really glad you asked it. It's a very common uh, question and there's a lot of kind of misinformation and people trying to profit off of selling you creams and stuff. All right, now back to the episode. Okay, so now that we have your ins, and I know your vibe should be higher right now because you're all excited and stuff for the good stuff, <laughs> we're going to temporarily shift into the outs. <laughs> so honestly, you can totally keep those good high energy vibes high during the outs because it's kind of like if you've ever like broken up with a partner and you're just like, take your shit, <laughs> you're like throwing things at them. Okay. I don't think any of us realistically have probably gone through a breakup like that, but I know mentally we kind of have, where we're like, I don't want this anymore. I don't want that memory anymore. And you know, that kind of stuff, but you know how it kind of feels good. Like it kind of feels powerful. I mean, you might have the like obligatory, like break down and cry later, <laughs> but honestly, all of those like energetic movements are really essential. And I know I'm kind of getting a little bit like spiritual with you guys today, but it's really important because honestly, I found in my life that if I don't open myself to the parts of us as humans that we have kind of conveniently disconnected from keeping ourselves busy with all of the modern day life things, we have to know that like this stuff is, it feels good. And the moment we start to open ourselves and like release like old viewpoints around like spirituality or whatever, the more you can reap the benefits from it. So if you're somebody who's always been skeptical about like anything spiritually, this isn't religion. This is different. This is more of just energetically you as a being, whatever you want to believe, it falls in the same category that it's really important to open yourself to these kinds of concepts because I mean, just the same way that you can walk up to somebody and their energy is immediately off and you feel off. I mean, that's the, the roots of humanity. <laughs> Those are things that like we innately have in our bodies that our intuition is like on point with still <laughs> that we can't be like, oh, that's just a fluke. And it's like, sometimes it could be, but at the same time, usually when you read an energy, you know that that's a real like thing, you know what I mean? So for yourself, raising your energy and kind of accessing it is really important, especially as you are trying to set better quality intentions for a new year or whatever, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who can say that a lot more eloquently, <laughs> but from my experience and scope and perspective, that's how I'm going to describe it to you. So I hope that that's digestible and accessible <laughs> to you right now. But with that said, bring that kind of kick it to the curb energy into yourself right now and think about things that you want to bring out or to take out rather shift out of your life potentially for good, potentially just to see how you feel, or just temporarily. Like again, some people can use nutritional interventions like keto or whatever for a short, short term situation and have long term results. I've definitely seen people who maybe for a little bit of time, they want to do more barbell work in the gym, and then they do want to return back to more of what's called like functional training with kettlebells and things like that. That's great. It's really good to kind of keep things interesting and different. Maybe there's some new sports that you want to try temporarily or something like that. There's a lot of things too that like you just simply cannot do for the rest of your life. Like maybe once I have children or if I have children that I will no longer be able to do some of the things that I want to do now. So thinking of things that you want to shift in, you also want to be thinking about what do you want to shift out? And I really, I really like this one because it's more empowering in a way sometimes than just the bringing in because sometimes it's not always easy to access what you want to bring in. Sometimes it takes a lot more legwork because it's something new, but when you want to shift something out, realistically, it's as simple as you making that choice, like cutting out gluten or something like that. 
<laughs> I know there's a lot of mental legwork sometimes that can happen because you're like, does this have gluten in it? Does this have gluten in it? But in the long run, like you make that decision and you follow it the best you can. And then you inevitably have done it. <laughs> so sometimes that's kind of cool. The outs are like that. So I know there's a bajillion other examples I could probably give you, but I want to at least give you some of the things that I am going to be kind of continuing to shift out. And some of them, honestly, if you really think about it, the ins and outs are just kind of inverse of each other sometimes. And so if you feel like focusing on what bringing what you bring in is a better energy than what you want to take out, just kind of flip flop, like inverse the statement of what you want to bring in to what you want to bring out or vice versa. So sometimes like, for example, one of the things that I want to continue to do is remind myself that I don't owe people anything and make sure that I keep holding that boundary with my family or friends, you know, things like that. And some people might prefer to think of that as they want to bring in better boundaries. They want to keep stronger boundaries with their relationships with their family or their friends. Or some people might be like, I want to stop not having boundaries with my family or friends. You see what I mean? It's kind of a good way to figure out what resonates better with you individually. And so for me, I tend to like the positive reinforcement, but the outs aren't always negative. They don't have to be in a way where you think of it as a immediate negative thing or something that you're losing. But in the same sense, it is like something that you're shedding, you know, so you kind of are obviously losing it. <laughs> but it's really important to think about some of the stuff that you more specifically just want out of your life. So they may not always be things that you are bringing in, but you're always going to be gaining something by shedding something. And so that's kind of a fun side to this. And this is why this entire chat today was important for me to have with you. And I hope you're not confused at this point. <laughs> I know that this is like a lot of thinking and reflecting that you have to do, but I think it's really worth it. And I really hope that you embrace these concepts and put them to use at least for like a couple things in your life, because it will really be kind of a game changer um, for the trajectory of your next year of 2024 because it's going to help you have more of a focus on something that is going to, and where you, I think they say where you focus, you flow, something like that. <laughs> I should probably find that whole phrase because I really like that one too, but I think it's something along the lines of like where you focus, you flow, and then you go. I think it's something like that. Anyways, the concept is the more you focus on something, the more you're going to aim at something and get there or get towards it, right? I think a lot of people like to use the analogy that the problem when you are like, if you were to be swerving in your car and you're trying not to hit a tree, odds are really strong that you're going to hit the tree because you're focusing on the tree. But if you focused on something else, you're more likely and statistically would not hit the tree if you weren't focusing on it. So what, <laughs> what is your tree? What do you want to hit? <laughs> but uh, the point is that it's really important for you to think about what do you want to flow towards? So thinking of all the ins can be a lot better, but thinking of the outs are very good too, because then it reminds you every time you do the thing that you don't want anymore in your life, you're like, oops, okay, not doing that again. I, I recognize that now, you know, for, for my girlies who are dating, maybe you are realizing that you keep dating the same kind of person, <laughs> or maybe you do the same things again, and it perpetuates the same problem you've been having with people you date. And so maybe you want to pick things that you want to stop doing, that you want to throw out, so to speak, of people pleasing or being uh, afraid for confrontation or afraid to hold your own or, you know, not taking space for yourself. And so, or not demanding respect or equal respect. You know, those are a lot of things that sometimes if you say, I don't want, I want to leave in 2023, not having my future partner or whoever I'm dating mutually respect me, because if I respect them, I deserve the equal amount of respect back. You know what I mean? Um, anybody who knows me and maybe in 2024, we're going to have some relationship chat <laughs> episodes. If that would be interesting to you, let me know because I love, I love, uh, talking all things relationships because it's definitely been a, uh, interesting angle of my life. And a lot of, I have observed that a lot of my friends tend to ask 
me for advice in those areas. And again, I'm not a guru or something in that world, but I do know how to hold a lot of respect for myself and um, for others and make sure that I, I mean, I'm just, I like to communicate. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I've learned and a lot of things that I've taken responsibility for. And so I know what I've had to say no to. Like I, I know what I've had to pick out of my personalities and be like, I don't want to do that anymore. I want that out. So all that to say, when you're thinking of the outs, think about those things that you just don't want to be a part of you anymore. I guess a really important one to add to think about is I know a lot of us struggle with uh, what they usually call like yo-yo dieting or very restrictive back and forth type of mentalities around food or your fitness. Um, and this could be an out for you. Maybe you want to shed your rigidity in your mind around perfection and making sure that you don't constantly try to choose things that are not necessarily um, supportive of a long-term health goal for yourself, if we're speaking about health goals, which we are mostly. <laughs> that is what this is about. So if you're somebody who is constantly like, I need to do this thing, I need to do uh, that, or I didn't do enough of this routine, or I'm not, I'm not staying on top of my fitness very well, you know, I, I should just give up or screw it all, you know. If you're somebody who's constantly going back and forth that way, maybe something that you want to leave behind in 2023 is unrealistic expectations for yourself. And a lot of us want to set unrealistic expectations because we think that it's going to push us harder. We think that it's going to make us like achieve more. But if the proof is in the pudding that you have constantly gone back and forth whenever you've tried to have that mentality, then it's not working. Sorry, girl. I got to tell you right now. It's not working. Um, I have a lot of clients in the past who have told me before, like, I did this diet and it worked for me. I'm like, well, it didn't work for you because it didn't last. You have not kept it up, right? <laughs> and I know that's like really tough love, but it's true. We can't keep saying that things worked for us if they didn't last. And sometimes we can implement things that did sort of work, perhaps. Maybe we felt really good in a certain way, but then if it didn't stick, it's not going to be something that really works for you, right? So maybe picking things of like, so a lot of people are like, oh, I did Whole30 and it worked for me. I dropped like 20 pounds or some junk. I'm just using that as a round number today. But they've gained it back and more. And I'm like, okay, well, technically then Whole30 didn't work for you. It just did something for you when you were following it but what about it didn't work that you couldn't stick to that or keep the weight off or whatever you know what I mean and so then they're like meh true so then I'm like well what could you take from that diet and implement into your lifestyle that might work for you maybe it's not being quite as rigid as the whole 30 is because that like removes entire food groups and then you like slowly reincorporate them and yada yada maybe you just focus on nourishing foods as much as possible, like 80 to 90% of your week. And maybe there's room for some of the treats and things that you like because there's a little bit of balance involved there. So you're not as restrictive. Maybe that's what will work for you. That's similar, but not, you know what I mean? Maybe there were food items like, again, gluten, for example, that typically irritates our guts for the process level and the type of gluten products that we have here in the U.S., Maybe that's what worked for you from the diet is that you removed most of those products. And now that you're kind of willy nilly eating all your pizzas and your breads and things again, maybe you just actually need to remove gluten, you know, just using that example again. So those are different ways to think about it when you're thinking of like outs and such, because it can help you determine some areas that are going to be going to be more supportive of your health in the long term, And Guys, I always have the perspective that the only thing that really matters with your health is playing the long game. I know so many of us just want the short-term rewards. A lot of us are basically kind of, we enjoy this rat race. I have clients that light up when they hear some diet or we're talking about some fad thing that they're going to try and they get so excited about it because I think there's crowd mentality involved um, because it's what's in right now. And then there's also this kind of thing where they're like, so familiar with crash dieting and stuff that they're like, this is going to be fun. I'm going to challenge myself and blah, blah, blah. And then they, they go through the inevitable, like fall off, hate themselves, mad at themselves, 
gain weight again, maybe gain more weight. And then the yo-yo continues. So this is where that yo-yo comes from. And that's something that is a mentality that's like void of reality (laughs) with life. And I think the main thing that I always try to drive home with a lot of my clients is in reality, life isn't linear. We can't choose linear things. We have to have grace for the curveballs that life is going to inevitably throw. And the moment you can get to a place where you have a foundational set of habits and mentalities to support your long-term health and keep you playing the long game, you're winning at life. Because the only way to win at life is to keep playing, to be healthy, to keep going forward. So if you're not doing well with your health or you're going back and forth and back and forth, you're not necessarily winning the game, right? And it doesn't mean that you're going to be completely like winning the game isn't being completely void of health issues or challenges or whatever. It just means that you are constantly aiming to do your best that you can and have grace with yourself and, you know, take care of yourself the best you can, no matter what life throws at you. So anytime I talk about anything health, I'm not your girl for crash diets or quick fixes or any of the junk that makes a lot of money on the side here nowadays. There's a lot of these fitness girls out there who are like, I did this one thing and I changed my genetics forever and I got really lean and now I can stay lean. You know, like I've seen several people recently that have this and they sell like the lean body system and something else and they make you fitness programs and it's all a scam. (laughs) It could work temporarily for some people, but it's never going to be teaching you how to master the game of life. And the game of life is mastered by finding what foundational health habits work for you and continuing to stay very confident in your decisions and your choices of what health means to you and how are you supporting yourself and not being in denial (laughs) when things are not going right, despite what diet type you follow or what fitness regimen you follow. Because I think that that's mostly where I have seen a lot of people kind of constantly yo-yo. So if you're looking to break out of those types of mentalities or behaviors or habits, whatever, I would say the best place for you to start is to get comfortable with adjusting your expectations for yourself and also focusing on what you can do anytime life throws a curveball because literally it's going to. It always does. I talk about this a lot with my clients on my private stories on Instagram and stuff, because it's just a really common theme. A lot of times we are just massively indoctrined by narratives, especially in female diet culture, where it's just like, you're only good enough if you're doing the diet that the rest of us are doing. You're only good enough if you're thin. You're only good enough if the scale is going down while you're trying to focus on your health, you know? And it's so obnoxious (laughs) in my mind (laughs) because We're just spending so many hours of our brain hyper-focused on something so superficial and to the extent where it becomes like a part of us that like if we're not, like a lot of people right now are probably like, but Kills, it's still so important for me to look a certain way. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I mean. (laughs) We are just literally so hyper-focused on these things and it's distracting us from what really matters in life. So I'm not going to go on my soapbox about it, but I do want you to focus And remember that when you're doing this ins and outs strategy exercise, that you think about what supports what you really value. Do you know your core values? If you don't know your core values, that's a really good exercise to do. Um, Maybe I'll do an episode on core values if that's something that you guys want to do. But at the same time, you can easily look up some exercises on YouTube or there's even little things online where you can figure out more of what your core values are. But if you're living your life right now misaligned with your core values, a lot of the other things in your health are never going to go in the trajectory that you're hoping until you realign your job, your lifestyle, your partner, your own habits with those core values. So I know that this is a pretty simple exercise, but I hope that coming at it from an angle of energetically focusing in on what you want to keep bringing into your life right now or what you want to accept in 
or that you want to like literally actually do and then thinking about all the things you want to shed and no longer do can help you come into the new year with better goals quote unquote because we sometimes overwhelm ourselves thinking about like goals 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 you know and then we keep them as smart goals and so that they're specific and measurable and you know all that stuff and you don't need to you know you really can access a lot and this is actually naturally a process of grace and gratitude in your life by just changing the way you approach your health habits and goals in general so i'm going to end today's chat first episode of 2024 on that note i want to send you lots of love lots of hugs welcoming this new year it's um gonna be a good one guys it's gonna be a really good one I can feel it. So um, I hope that this episode spoke to you today. Share this with another woman in your life who you think could truly benefit from this exercise. I think that it could be a fun one as well for you to do with your bestie or something like that. And if you would love to, if you feel so called to, give our show a good five-star rating or maybe comment something that has helped you so far from Rebel Wellness. We're closing out 2023. Welcome 2024. And I want to remind you as always, celebrate your strength and nourishment, walk with confidence, and I will catch you next week on another episode of Rebel Wellness. If you are still listening, thank you for tuning in to our latest episode of Rebel Wellness. If you've been enjoying our conversations around health, fitness, and wellness, I have some exciting news for you. So if you would love to join our newsletter group, you can join us on coachkales.com or you can join my Stan store at stan.store backslash kales, K-A-I-L-E-S. And that's an awesome opportunity for you to snag some freebies that I've created, including a macro hack grocery list that is gonna help you kind of design a custom grocery list especially for following macronutrients because as you know if you didn't listen to my macros in may series i would go back to those episodes because it has been a game changer for so many of our listeners for getting more on top of how to shape their physique and their health goals with the food they're eating so don't sleep on that go get your free download s-t-a-n like stan the man stan.store backslash kills and you can also join our newsletter from that And if you would like to reach out to me, chat, maybe work together, you can also contact me through my website, coachkales.com. And I would absolutely love you to join our Rebel Wellness Podcast Instagram, which is at Rebel Wellness Podcast. And you can also join my flagship coaching page at Coach by Kales. That's where it all began. That's where I share the most um, kind of custom to what I do work on specifically with my clients on that page. So join that one. It's all feminine wellness focused and I share some great stuff, some goofy stuff, things that you just don't want to miss as well as healthy recipes and things and easy recipes because we all kind of need some easy grab and go things, don't we? So I would love you to join both those pages as you'll be joining a community of like-minded females who are all committed to living their best lives. So hit that follow button. And I would love if you felt the need to share and rate our podcast. We would love that. Anyways, thanks for listening. And I hope to catch you next Sunday or say hello on the gram.